Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem on the JE Advanced Test for 2021 deals with impulse and angular momentum and also the relationship between linear and angular momentum. So let's read the problem and see if we can figure it out. So this is part one of a two-part problem because they're beginning to give you a problem and then ask for two specific answers. The first answer, they want to know the value of J where J represents uh, if you look at the units, the angular momentum of the pendulum. So we have a pendulum that consists of a bob of mass 0.1 kilogram and a massless, inextensible string of length 1 meter. It is suspended from a fixed point at a height of 0.9 meters above a frictionless horizontal floor. Initially, the bob of the pendulum is lying on the floor at rest vertically below the point of suspension. A horizontal impulse, P equals 0.2 kilogram meters per second, is imparted to the bob at some instant. After the bob slides for some distance, the string becomes taut and the bob lifts off the floor. The magnitude of the angular momentum of the pendulum about the point of suspension just before the bob lifts off is J kilogram meters squared per second, and we're looking for the value of J. So this is kind of an interesting problem. I've never seen anything like it before. So let's make a quick drawing of what's happening. We have a ceiling. From the ceiling, we suspend a string, but the string is longer than the distance from the ceiling to the floor, so that it's crumbled up a little bit and attached to a what they call a bob. That's a small object. You can think of it as a point object. You can then say that the height of the ceiling is 0.9 meters, but that the length of the string is equal to one meter. So now we impart upon it an impulse. I like to use the letter I for impulse. Now let's see what they use here. I think they use a different symbol for impulse. The magnitude, uh, some distance. Impulse P. Well, let's call it P because that's what they're using here. So P is equal to 0.2 kilogram meters per second. And so that causes the bob to move in a horizontal direction. Of course, it's going to do that for a while until the string is tight. So at some point, the string will be fully extended and then it will continue on in some circular motion. So at that point, we have what we would call angular momentum. Until then, of course, the string is slowly unraveling until it's completely taut. All right, so they want to know the angular momentum of the pendulum. So L is equal to question mark. So what is the definition of the angular momentum? Well, the definition of the angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So the moment of inertia of a pendulum where all the mass is at the very end is simply mr squared, so that would be L is equal to mr squared. And omega, as it's going around, notice we have the radius here and it's swinging around like that. So then we have uh, V over R, where V would be the velocity at that moment, right? So the, v the velocity as it's taking off from the floor, uh, or just before it takes off, it has certain velocity V. These R's cancel out, so the angular momentum is equal to MRV. Now, that angular momentum should also be equal to the equivalent linear momentum as it's moving across the floor right here. However, the distance is that R here is the length of the string, and R here is equal to the height. And the question is, which of the two are we going to use? Because essentially, what we can then look at is we can look at the mass of the bob, which is given. We can look at the velocity of the bob, which we can figure out based upon the impulse. And then we look at the R, and the R is equal, equal to the height or the radius of this or the length of the string. But it turns out, since it's moving across the floor at this height, the distance here, we want to take the range to be equal to the height, the distance from where the bob is moving to where it's attached, rather than the length of the string. What we also want to do, so in this case, is going to be L is equal to mh times v. Now we also need to know v, and that comes from the impulse. By definition, the impulse is equal to force times delta t, or it's equal to the change in momentum. I use small p for momentum, linear momentum. Big P for the impulse, so this is the impulse, so we don't get confused. And that is equal to the change in M times V. 
Now the mass isn't changed, it is equal to m times the change in v. The change in v, of course, is what we're looking for because it was zero here and it's non-zero over here. So that means that delta v is going to be equal to the impulse p divided by the mass, and the impulse is 0 0.2, and the mass is equal to 0 0.1, which means the velocity is 2 meters per second after the impulse hits the bob. Now we can plug all that in. So we have L is equal to the mass, 0.1, times the height, 0.9, times velocity, 2. And so that would be equal to 0.18. And the units are kilograms, meters squared per second. And so the number we're looking for here is 0.18. And so that's actually a fairly reasonable problem. The only tricky part is, what do we use for the radius of the angular momentum? And we're supposed to use the radius of the equivalent height, not the length of the string. And that is how it's done.